Welcome, this is Jennifer, and I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm sharing lots of techniques for doing masked ink blended backgrounds. Now, this is an opportunity to use your inks, your stamps, your dyes, your stencils, all in new ways to create beautiful colored cards. Another reason to give these techniques a try is that they're great for creating one layer cards that don't have any bulk for mailing. I have lots of examples to share with you today, but we'll start with a simple one that just gives some basic tips for doing masking and ink blending. For this first card and several others in this video, I'm using the new Gina K Designs Luck and Love Kit. I like her kits because they are packed full of supplies. Lots of different styles in one set too, so you can get a few different styles of cards. Now this has two large six by eight stamp sets that you see at the top. There's a layering stencil set, coordinating dies for the stamp sets, and cardstock. Then there are some pre-printed sentiments that are easy to quickly add onto your cards. So I'm gonna be using different things from this set throughout the video, wanted to start out by showing you that. For my first card, I'll be using some images from this stamp set that's in the kit. I like that these are solid because they're great for doing techniques, such as the one we're doing today. There are coordinating dies in the kit. Keep in mind those clovers at the top, you could stamp and die cut a few of them and layer them to make them flowers also. I will also be using the Gina K Designs Master Layouts 9 die set. This was on my favorites list and I use it several times in this video. On the first card, I'll be using that rectangle die that's over on the left. These are all perfectly sized to work nicely on cards. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And they're great for doing masking and ink blending like we're doing today. Gina has lots of examples that she's done. I encourage you to check out her Instagram. I'll link to it on showing different ways to use these dies with ink blending and masking. I'm just doing even more ideas for you today. Okay, now for masking, I'm using Gina K Designs Masking Magic. I really like this masking paper because it's thick. You can stamp and ink on it a lot and it won't bleed. It also really removes nicely, but stays put when you need it to. You can see I've bought a lot of it so I don't run out, but you could use absolutely any masking paper you want for this. Now here's a little secret I haven't shared in a video in a long time. Whenever I'm creating an inky or stamped card, I like to put a piece of masking paper on the back of it before I start, so I don't accidentally get ink on the back. So I cut this piece of masking paper to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm sticking it to the back of my note card. Once I've created the card, I can remove this and I keep it. I actually stick the masking paper in one of my cabinet doors. And when I go to create another one, I get it out and I reuse it a few times. So now my card has masking paper on the back of it. This just saves me from ending up with an inky back to my card. Now I have another piece of masking paper of the same size and I'm lining up that rectangle die from the Master Layouts 9 die set and I'm cutting it towards the top right. This is the area where I want to do some ink blending. So I'm removing half of the release paper and then I kind of position the side that still has the release paper on it. I make sure it's in the corner, make sure it's centered up, then I press the other side down and then I remove the release paper again. That just helps me to get it centered so I don't have to keep trying over and over again to get it positioned just right. So now the back of our card is masked and the front of our card is masked except for that little rectangle where we'll do some inking. I like to use my bone folder to press it down to make sure that it has good contact so it doesn't move when we do our inking. For my ink blending, I am using Gina K Designs inks. You could use whatever inks you prefer to use for ink blending, but her colors are beautiful. I also am working on a waffle flower stencil mat. That's just one of the surfaces I like. And I have my ink in an ink stand so it doesn't move as I ink. Now at first I thought I wanted to do just a light amount of color. I wanted a light area up here. So you see me putting on a light amount of ink and blending that. But after doing a bit of inking, I decided I wanted darker color, heavier amount of ink. So I stopped and then went back and added more of the same colors. I'm using the Gina K Turquoise Sea and Lucky Clover. I love those colors. So here I'm going back and just putting a lot of those colors down. The key to ink blending 
is overlapping your color. So notice how high I went with the blue and I'll go really low with the green. And that's where we get that blending in the middle and it actually creates kind of a new color there. You don't need to blend perfectly for this technique because we are going to stamp over it too. So it won't really show if you have a little uh, heavier ink here and there. I did add some fresh asparagus ink towards the top to make it darker and tranquil teal towards the bottom to make that darker. Wipe off the excess ink and we're ready to do our stamping. Now here I'm using the Gina K Designs Music to My Soul stamp set. This is a new one. It has some beautiful images, but I decided to use that rectangle on the bottom that has the music notes. I'm stamping this over my ink blending. That is one great way to step up your ink blended backgrounds, especially when masked. It gives a little bit of interest instead of just the solid color. So I'm lining up that image, notice my mask is still there, and I'm stamping it with the Tranquil Teal. Now this will be pretty dark. If you want that to be softer, you could use one of the lighter colors, but I thought this looked nice here. Once I'm done, I always like to heat set my ink a little bit before removing the mask. I feel like that helps to uh, make sure all the color is dry before I mess with it. I don't wanna mess it up at this point. So now I can peel this off and look at that beautiful little area of color and stamping. Next, I want to stamp my floral image, but I don't want it to go below the bottom of the inked area. So I had that scrap of masking paper. I keep all of those scraps and place it in the bottom so it doesn't stamp below there. I am making it so that the image hangs out of the colored area towards the top. I think that looks really nice. I'm stamping this with Gina K Obsidian Black Amalgam Ink. It's my favorite black ink for pretty much any kind of stamping. You can use it with Copic markers, watercolor, colored pencils, anything you want. And it's very dark, crisp black. Okay, now it's time to stamp our sentiments. I'm using a combination of two little greetings from the same stamp set in the kit. And I'm stamping that with black ink right below it. Now this is a basic design that you could use with a variety of stamps. You could stamp a Christmas tree in that inked area and put a Christmas greeting underneath it. You could do a birthday balloon, anything you want with this basic design. I'm also adding a little butterfly on there and I didn't put any embellishments on this. So this is a true one layer card. I thought it'd be good to also stamp a sentiment on the inside. So I'm using the Get Well Wishes stamp set. There are many sentiments that are great for Get Well cards, very thoughtful. And sadly, I've been having to make more of these Get Well cards lately. To make sure I get it stamped centered and straight on the inside of my card, I have put my clear alignment panel right over that. It is sized just right, it has the grid lines, it's nice and thick, and I can make sure that my sentiment is centered and straight using those grid lines. Super helpful to me. Once I have it straight and centered, I will close the door on my Misty, grab the stamp, remove the little panel, and stamp it. If you want to, you can practice the stamping on the clear panel and wipe it clean when you're done. I also added a butterfly. Okay, so now I'm all done with the card, it's all dry. So now I can remove that masking paper from the back. You'll notice there was ink on it, so good thing it was there. And now the back is nice and white. So here's a look at the completed card. It's one layer, so it'll mail wonderfully. But because we did the ink blending and the music note stamping, it has a lot of interest to it, even though there aren't any embellishments on it. You can easily change the greeting and the images used to be whatever occasion you need. This is one of those designs that's kind of a go-to that you can use over and over again whenever you're feeling in a rut. So this is a good example of basic, basic masking and ink blending, stepped up with a bit of stamping. My next example shows how to take your dies and use them creatively so you can get some unique masked backgrounds. Now this set I've been wanting to use, I'm so excited about this set. I love it, it's on my favorites list. It came out last month I think. It's from Gina K Designs, the Friendly Silhouette stamp set. It works really well with the master layouts die set I showed you earlier, so I thought I'd use them together. Again, Gina has a lot of great examples using the two together that are worth checking out. And I'll be using the set several times throughout this video. To create these six panels of masking, I'm actually using the window die I showed you earlier. Here it is again. You can see how it does four panels in the center of a card nicely. 
I thought I would change it up to make it six panels. I want a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card, so I have a piece of masking paper of the same size, and I'm drawing a pencil line down the center. This will help me to make sure that I center the panels when I do my die cutting. Now normally you would take this die and just place it right in the center and cut, but what I'm gonna do is shift it to the left so that the pencil line is centered through the right hand panels. So you'll see the pencil line straight through that, run it through my die cut machine. Now I will pop this die in place just but offset to the right. So the middle panels pop right in place, just kind of fits like a puzzle piece. Then I will tape that in place and run it through the die cut machine again. So now I have six panels from the window die that normally has four panels. I really like to change up my dies this way, especially when doing masking because it gives different looks. I'll use that die again later on. Okay, so now I have these six openings and I'm masking off one of them and I'm using scraps of masking paper that I had left over. You could use any kind of temporary tape also. I just like to use those scraps and not let them go to waste. Now over each of the openings, I'm using a heavy amount of ink towards the center and then I make it fade towards the top and I decided to do a rainbow. So I, on the first one I did pink. Here I'm doing uh, the sweet mango color heavy towards the center, lighter towards the top. You could make it all solid, but I thought this made it even more interesting. So each time I'm just masking off different panels. I continued to do this until all six panels were colored in with a rainbow of colors. I believe the colors I used were passionate pink, uh, sweet mango, wild dandelion, lucky clover, turquoise sea, and powder blue. Okay, so now I have all of those inked and I still have my mask in place. And now I'm stamping a floral image from that Friendly Silhouette stamp set into some of the openings. I will also do a butterfly in some of the other openings. Now this is an opportunity to use any stamps you want. And I really think it looks most effective if you use black ink. If you want to, you could white heat emboss here instead. If you decide to do that, make sure your ink that you blend it on is very dry. Heat set it very generously because otherwise the embossing powder will stick all over the color. I decided to do black because I really think it makes a statement. Okay, so I stamped in all of the openings and now I'm removing that masking frame there and check out that background. I love the look of that. Before stamping Miss You on my background, I wanted to make sure I had it centered and straight. So I'm putting that alignment panel, the clear panel that I used to get my sentiment straight, I'm putting that over my background and stamping on that. I can then see that it's placed just right, I can remove the alignment panel, and then stamp again on my card. And this ink will just wipe right off of that clear alignment panel so I can do it over and over again. Now for the word friend, I used the friend dies included in the master layouts die set that I used for the window also. I cut the shadow from white and the word friend from black and layered those together. I did have my masking paper on the back so it's nice and clean, I can remove that. And there we have our completed card. I did stamp the same images with pink ink on a Gina K envelope. All of my envelopes today are from Gina K Designs. She has beautiful colors which match her inks great. Now the background is all one layer. The only dimension on here is that stacked friend die cut. If you wanted it to be one layer, you could use the shadow die to create a mask and have that on there before you do all the inking and stamping. Then in the friend Friendly Silhouette stamp set, there is a friend stamp you could stamp with black ink in the center. I really wanted the dimension on this, but I thought I should demonstrate that idea of masking this so it's one layer, and I'll do that on this card. So this is, again, a one layer card. It looks like it has dimension, but it doesn't. It's a mini slimline. This note card size is three and a half by six and a quarter inches. I've placed the note card onto my Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. I'll talk about that more in a moment. I'm placing a mask on it. This is masking paper, and I have cut that window die that I used on the last card from the center. And I'm putting it towards the top at an angle for something fun. I also used the shadow die for the word friend and cut that from masking paper. And I'm placing that towards the bottom of my window area here. So we're masking the shadow of the word friend. I'll press that all down with my bone folder to make sure it's stuck, and now we can do our inking. 
Okay, so that Brutus Monroe st uh, stick and stamp surface that I'm working on here, it holds everything still as you're inking. This I time I didn't put masking paper on the back of my card. Because I'm sticking my card to this and it's not going to move, I don't have to worry about ink getting on the back of it. So this is another way to protect the back of your card. It just depends on whatever supplies you have. After inking those areas with peach, pink, and orange inks, I'm masking off just one of the panels. I'm starting with that bottom right that overlaps with our mask that says friend. I'm picking up our stick and stamp mat and putting it in my Misty. It fits perfectly for in here. And now I'm stamping it floral image right into that panel. I then can move these masks to mask off one of the other panels and stamp an image there. And I'll continue to do that to fill in the openings here. So you can see how it's convenient to have that sticky mat that you can work off of your Misty and then move it into your Misty and it just holds it all in place. If you've watched my videos in the past, you know I would cut down my own sticky mat to make it work. I like this better because it's white and it is already cut to the size of your Misty and you can easily wash it and it keeps it stick. Okay, so now after removing all the masking, I'm stamping the word friend into the area that we had had the mask and I'm stamping a sentiment just underneath that. So it looks like that friend is a black die cut with a white shadow around it, but really I did masking, which resulted in the white, and then the black stamping in the center of it. So this is a one layer card, three and a, uh, three and a half by six and a quarter inches. I'm crazy about this design. It's just something different. Uh, and I plan to do more of these and hopefully maybe put butterflies on some, use some of the clover stamps from earlier. This can be used in many ways. Okay, my next example shows an oval masked area, but this time I did inking inside and then I did stamping on the outside of the masked area. So this is a great way to make more from the mask you create. Okay, so I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece and I'm cutting the oval from the center top and this oval die is in that Master Layouts 9 die set once again. I'm going to keep both of those masks. I'll end up using both. I have a note card on my stick and stamp mat, and then I'm placing the mask right on top of it. Now off screen, I did some ink blending, basic ink blending. I used Wild Mysteria, Plum Punch, and Passionate Pink from Gina K Designs. Now I'm picking that all up, putting it into my stamping tool, and lining up this floral image from that Friendly Silhouettes stamp set. So I'm using a lot of the same products on all of these cards, but each one gives a different look. So I'm stamping this with black ink. Now at this point, I left the mask on. I was thinking I wanted all of this stamping to stay contained in that oval. Usually, I like the silhouette stamping to be after you take off the mask, but I wanted to try this. So I let that dry. I always let it dry before I remove the mask. And looking at this, I wish I had stamped after. I like when the stamping is outside of the oval too. So I just put it back in and stamped it again since I haven't moved anything here. Now in my first example in this video, I showed how to do some stamping in the background of your ink blending to make it stand out. This time I'm putting the stamping outside of the ink blending. I'm putting the Simons' Stamp Friendship Text background into my Misty, and I also have in there my Brutus Monroe Stick and Stamp Mat. I'm putting my card upside down onto the uninked stamped. I'll close it and flip it over, and now my card is stuck on the mat, and I can be sure that my text will stamp straight. Now this time I'm taking the leftover piece of our masking and placing it right over the inking we've already done. Make sure your ink is dry before you do this or it won't want to stick. I first stamped this with a super pale pink ink but then changed my mind so I stamped it again with a slightly darker pink ink so it would stand out even more. Then we can remove that mask in the center, save them because you can use them over and over. To remove my card from my sticky mat, I hold the card still and kind of peel away the mat. Works great. I also added the layered friend die cut, white for the shadow, black for the word itself, and stamped hang in there underneath it. I did add some black gemstones to the inked area. So the gemstones and the friend layered die cut are the only dimension on here. You could skip the gemstones and do that masking and stamping trick for the word friend if you prefer. But on this one, I thought it was good to add a little bit of dimension. 
So this shows you can use both pieces of a mask that you create so that you can have one area be inked and one area be stamped. Now let's do some examples of ink blending and masking along with stencils. Here, the only masking I did was that white strip where we stamped So Very Thankful. And I did ink blending with a beautiful stencil on top. So this is the new Gina K Designs Bold Bouquet Stencil. It really fills up a card nicely. It could even work on a larger card. Really is beautiful for this particular technique too. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card here and I'm kind of planning out where things will go. I'm trying to figure out where I want to put my masked white strip so that I have the a spot to stamp that sentiment. So here I'm just testing it out. I thought it was fun at an angle. So once I have it positioned just right, I'll take a picture with my phone so I can refer back to this placement as I'm creating. I'm placing a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card onto my sticky mat. It'll stay put there for this whole time. I'm now placing my stencil on top and putting tape along the top just so I have a hinge up there so I can lift this up and change things as I'm going. Now, it turns out I didn't need to put the stencil on it at this point, but you'll see me take it off later. I have a thin strip of Masking Magic leftover masking paper, and I'm placing that at an angle, kind of where I want that sentiment to be per the photo I just took. So I'm placing that across there, and now we can start inking up our background. So what I decided to do was do a rainbow of inking along the background, solid, but very, very light. Then we will go back with the stencil and put the same colors on it, but darker. So bear with me, it's definitely worth trying. I have lots of masking paper scraps here that I'll use to mask the little diagonal sections of color. You could use tape here if you want, I just didn't want these to go to waste. I'm starting by masking so I have just that bottom little triangle on the corner there to ink. And I'm kind of starting with green and I'll do a rainbow towards the top. So here I'm just inking with a light amount of green ink. Then we can take off those masks that we just put down and shift them so that I have my next stripe to do right above that in another shade of green. There is one mask I don't move every time, and that is the one we put down first for our sentiment. Now notice I left some of the green showing from our first area. I like doing that because when the inks overlap, they create a new color. So this is Lucky Clover, putting a light amount of ink here. And in that little sliver where the two greens overlap, we have a new color. So it looks like you did even more inking than we really did. So now we can peel these off and shift to our next diagonal line. This time I'll use the turquoise C. Once again, I'm putting this masking paper strip a little bit set below where the green ends so that we have a little bit of overlap. Now you could do this absolutely any way you want. I put a ton of colors down on here, but if you wanted to keep it simple, you could use less colors, make bigger kind of stripes going across it. All right, now remember, I'm keeping that one thin masking paper strip there so it stays white underneath it. Now we're moving to above that, and I thought I'd do some even more of that turquoise -y. I love that color, so I decided to do a wide diagonal line of that. After I've done that one, I'll move my masking paper again so that we overlap a little bit with the blue, and then we'll put a piece above that to create our stripe for the powder blue color. So all I'm doing is masking off a stripe and moving up as we go, making sure that the inks overlap a bit. So I continued to do this to cover the whole panel, and I went all the way up to yellow at the top, and all along that one masked strip is still down there where we'll put our sentiment. You'll see I had to take off the stencil there because it was in the way. We'll add it back in a moment. So now we have this soft striped inked background and we still have that masking paper there towards the bottom. Now I'm gonna keep this all on here. I'm not moving anything. I'm bringing that stencil back in and now we're gonna tape it at the top to create a hinge. You really don't need to tape it to hold it there because the mat is sticky and it'll hold the edges. But I'm gonna keep on lifting it a bunch so the hinge is helpful. While the stencil's lifted, I'm lining up some masking paper with the stripes we've already done. Then I'll close the stencil and put the same color of ink on top but a heavy amount, so it'll be darker in the stencil. So I'm using the exact same color stripes as before, but a heavier amount of ink. 
So there I did the green. Now I'll remove that tape and shift it up so that I mask off that blue stripe, the turquoise C. And remember, it kind of overlaps with the colors we've already done. So once I have those, I close my stencil down and I put that same turquoise C blue color on top just with a heavier hand. So this allows you to have a tone-on-tone -tone background of a rainbow stripe, and it's just darker in the areas of the stencil. All right, now time for that powder blue stripe, lining up my masking strips here, close the stencil, and apply a heavier amount of that powder blue color. And I will continue to do this for all of the stripes all the way to the top of the card. It took me about a half hour to do all of this inking, but for me, that's fast because I usually spend much more time on a card. Okay, so now we're to the top. We can remove everything here. So I remove my stencil and I can clean that. I can remove our masking strips, including that one that now has white underneath it. Then we can remove the card from our sticky mat and clean it. Now I have a stamp greeting here that I'm stamping in that white stripe. And then I have a friend black die cut. You could stamp that if you wanted to keep this one layer, but I thought that little bit of dimension would be helpful. I'm putting my clear alignment panel in there to practice my stamping. I wanna make sure after all this time, I don't mess it up. So I'll stamp that. Turns out it's centered up in that white area. So now I can clean off that panel. I just use a baby wipe or wet cloth. And now we can stamp directly onto our card and then add the friend die cut. By the way, the Gina K Connect liquid adhesive that you've seen me use for a long time now is available in a bigger bottle. And you can also get these empty uh, fine tip bottles. And so what I do is I take that bigger bottle and fill my little fine tip nozzle bottle. And I use that for my Connect now. And it really works well. I like that this particular bottle, the fine tip bottle, kind of sucks the <laughs> glue back down so it doesn't get clogged in the tip. It really works well and it has a little connected cap that keeps it from drying out. I thought it'd be fun to use the stencil also on a matching envelope. So I have my sticky mat and I'm placing my envelope flap onto it. I'm taking some of the release paper from the Masking Magic and stretching it across the front of the card to mask it. So instead of letting this go to waste, it's not sticky, but the ends of it are stuck to my sticky mat. So I'm just using some of my trash here in order to do a bit of quick masking. That's one of the other handy things about a sticky mat. Okay, so now I put the stencil down, the mat holds it, I apply my ink over it, and now we have a tone-on-tone -tone envelope flap that matches our card. Here's the completed card. I didn't add anything else to it. That friend die cut is actually two layers of white cardstock and one layer of black. I like that white trim kind of peeking out. The So Very Thankful is from that Friendly Silhouette stamp set. And there you can see how the envelope matches perfectly. So here I got a little more creative with my masking, but it was just strips that I had left over. You could definitely use masking tape or any kind of washi tape to do this also. My last two cards are again inked masked backgrounds, very simple masking, but I wanted to include this as I use some layering stencils creatively. And I want to encourage you to do the same or try to do the same with whatever you have. I'm using the layering stencils from the kit that I showed you at the beginning. I thought these hearts were really fun and you could use these stencils together or separately. They line up, but if you want to kind of create a unique looking background, you could offset them just by turning one of the stencils. So I'm going to do two backgrounds at once, two cards at once. One will be pink and one will be green. So I actually have two of the stamp and stick mats and I put a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card on each of them. I have strips of the masking paper left over. These are three quarters of an inch and I'm putting one right along the edge of each of these cards. So along the sides and along the top and bottom. So we have a rectangle masked at the center. You could use a rectangle die from a full sheet of masking paper if you wanted to. I just had a lot of these strips collected over time, so I'm putting them to use. You could also use washi tape. Now I'm starting out by putting a light amount of ink in the center. Now the pink one, I first thought I was gonna do yellow. I ended up putting some pink on top of it to make it peach. But I'm just putting a very soft amount of color, just so I can get that rectangle definition. Here's the green one, and I'm putting a light amount of the Lucky Clover green, making sure that I'm getting those edges. That will define our masked area. 
Okay, so now we can do some stenciling. I'm actually going to take these hearts on this green one and turn them into leaves. That's what I want to encourage you to do. Encourage you to look at how you could maybe use your stencils a little bit differently. So the pink, heart, or pink card will have hearts, the green card will have leaves. I put the first layer of the stencil down and I applied the same color but heavier. Now I'm coming in with the second of the layering stencil, lining it up, and this time I will use, I believe I used the fresh asparagus or jelly bean green, jelly bean green, to apply a heavier amount of this color on top. That way I have my little two-tone leaves there forming. I can remove this stencil. You could stop here if you wanted, but I wanted to build more up here. So I'm taking that first stencil again and offsetting it just randomly putting it on here and putting a very light amount of ink over this. Then I will take the other stencil in, set it down randomly on this and put a very light amount of ink over that. This just kind of builds up that solid soft background and adds some interest. You could skip this if you wanted, but this is another fun way to kind of make your layered backgrounds have even more layers. So I cleaned off my stencils and now I've moved over to the pink card and I'm doing the same process here. Applying the same stencils, making it darker for the hearts and then doing some more stenciling and a little bit soft offset. So we have two different cards here, both with the same technique, I guess, but different colors. Now I'm using a green marker to add a line to each of my hearts on the green card to make them look like leaves. So we have two very different themed cards here just by doing this simple line on each of the hearts. Now I decided to keep these simple from here. I'm using that large heart image on the top up there and the with love and prayer sentiment. And this is from one of the six by eight stamp sets included in that kit. Then for the green card, I'm using an image from this Gina K Designs You Are Enough stamp set. This set is actually free with a certain purchase over at Gina K at the time I put up this video, but it'll be available for purchase later on. So I stamped one of the images and sentiments just right there onto the inked area with black ink, and then I added a few black gemstones for a bit of sparkle. That's it for this card. Now I like that this has that smooth background and I was able to use my heart stencils to create a leaf background. Now for the pink card, I stamped that heart floral image with black ink towards the top center. I stamped with love and prayers and I cut out the heart on white cardstock and popped that in the middle. If I were to do this card again, I would mask that heart in the center and then stamp it and it'd be a one layer card. Now I hope you'll give some of these masking ideas a try. It's very simple, a great way to use your supplies creatively and really have fun. There's something really rewarding about creating like a one layer card that looks like it has a lot of dimension. All of the supplies are linked below in my description, but I encourage you to go to my blog over on my blog, I always share photos and a way to save these cards and videos for future reference and often share information on sales and free gifts as I am today. I thank you for watching. At the end here, I'll have a couple other videos for you. You have a wonderful week and I'll see you again very soon.